OPEC expected to stick to current production levels at today's meeting, and China's factory and services activity rises in June after a three-month slump. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Farage. OPEC is expected to stick to a previously decided output boost at its meeting today despite pressure to further increase production. After the EU ban on Russian oil imports, the OPEC Plus cartel agreed at their last meeting in early June to pump more than expected. But prices continue to be high and analysts say a respite is not in sight since OPEC Plus hasn't been able to meet its present targets. China's factory and services activity picked up in June, fueled by the easing of COVID-19 restrictions in major cities. The Non-Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, which is a key gauge of activity, defied expectations and surged to 54.7 points in June after three months of sluggish performance. It was the first time since February that the reading was above the 50-point mark, which separates growth from contraction. The manufacturing PMI rose to 50.2 points in June, up from 49.6 in May. Samsung Electronics says it's become the first chip maker in the world to mass produce advanced 3 nanometer microchips. The new chips will be smaller, more powerful and efficient and will be used in high performance computing applications before being put into gadgets like mobile phones. Samsung says compared to 5nm process, the first generation 3nm process can reduce power consumption by up to 45%, improve performance by 23% and reduce area by 16 percent. Samsung is investing $356 billion in mass producing these chips over the next five years. Indian companies are looking to boost their operations in Russia after the exodus of Western and Japanese companies left a huge gap. Russian officials say Indian retailers, drug makers and consumer goods companies are securing new projects in Russia and preparing to pitch for more. India and China have both avoided condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine and both countries have been buying cheap Russian crude. Crypto exchange Coinbase is renewing its focus on expansion in Europe and is in the process of registering in markets including Italy, Spain, France and the Netherlands. Coinbase says it plans to have retail and institutional products in all of these markets. It's already registered in the UK, Ireland and Germany. The move comes weeks after Coinbase slashed more than 1,000 jobs in the US amid the downturn in the crypto sector. UBS will pay $25 million to settle fraud charges related to an options trading strategy. The Securities and Exchange Commission says the wealth manager and banking group marketed and sold the yield enhancement strategy to about 600 investors through its platform of domestic financial advisors from February 2016 through to February 2017. The SEC says UBS didn't provide its financial advisors with adequate training and oversight in the strategy, so the advice they gave clients may not have been in their best interests. Global nuclear power capacity needs to double by mid-century to reach net zero emissions targets. That's according to the IEA. Achieving net zero emissions by mid-century could give the world a chance of capping temperature rises at one and a half degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Amid the current global energy crisis, governments are also looking to reduce reliance on imported fossil fuels to ensure their energy security. To reach net zero emissions, nuclear power capacity needs to double to 812 gigawatts by 2050 from 413 gigawatts this year. I'm Ramya Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.